Hi, Vlad here, DevInsideU.com, and today we're going to talk about an insanely interesting topic, what developers fight about. So put your boxing gloves on and let's get started. There is this thing called the Parkinson's Law of Triviality. In 1957, Cyril Parkinson, who was a British historian and not to be confused with James Parkinson, known for the Parkinson's disease, argued that members of an organization give disproportionate weight to trivial issues. In his example, he constructs a situation where a fictional committee who has been given a task to approve nuclear power plants ended up spending more time discussing which materials to use for a staff's bike shed instead of concentrating on the power plant itself. The term bike shedding found its way into software and since our industry is so young, boy do we love to argue. Everyone has an opinion about everything. We also want and sometimes even demand to be involved in the decision making and design process of every little feature. Most developers are really smart people and love to shove their massive intellects into other people's throats, including this guy. We fight over programming languages, tools, frameworks, platforms, design patterns, static or dynamic typing, the level of indentation, tabs versus spaces, the list goes on and on and on. As someone from my main audience, you might not have understood a few of these examples, but no worries, rather sooner than later you will get to know all of them, trust me. <laughs> so why does bike shedding take place? Well, the original argument suggests that everybody wants to feel productive and everyone can if the task at hand is easy. On the other hand, it's assumed that people who are responsible for building a nuclear power plant actually know what they're doing, so there's no need to discuss anything. Those professionals will take care of it anyway. In software, we have a similar example about code reviews. If you review someone's code, which is only 10 lines of code, you're going to be extremely critical and you're going to find 50 errors. On the other hand, if you're reviewing someone else's code, which is 200 lines long, you're not going to find any errors at all simply because you're not going to be looking so hard. In my opinion, bike shedding also has something to do with procrastination. It's human nature to delay hard things. So when a team is faced with two tasks, one trivial and one hard, a few people are going to start discussing the easy task and the others will join to feel productive. It has been estimated that the population of developers doubles every five years which means that at any given point in time, half of them have less than five years of experience. Also, most of these new developers, brilliant and skilled as they may be, are young, so attitude also plays a big role, which are topics that we will for sure discuss in the future. Let's talk about something else for a second. Is arguing always a bad thing? Honestly, I don't think so. Generally speaking, I don't believe that the world is black or white. I believe that without arguing, there can't be any progress or innovation. If everyone is happy with the way the things are, or if no one cares about anything, then no one will try to improve anything. Which brings me to the topic of active and passive developers. As I mentioned in my previous video about the power of self-marketing, most developers are passionate about technology. These I call active developers. They will argue for many reasons, but at least one of those reasons is that they care about their craft. There are other developers who are less tacky, so they prefer to stay out of such discussions and actually get things done instead. These I call passive developers. I would argue, I'm saying the word argue all the time. You have my permission to watch this video from the beginning, but this time make a drinking game out of it. So I would argue that most developers in a team should be active. As I just said, I believe that arguments are healthy. So my advice for you is simple. Have your own opinion and defend it if you care. But if the entire team agrees on something, respect that, even if you don't like it. A bad convention that is followed by everyone is a good convention. For instance, I prefer spaces over tabs, but if my team decides to use tabs, I will be the first one to configure my editor to stop replacing tabs with spaces. I believe that there is also a psychological or at least emotional aspect to this. I would argue that when we like or love things, a lot of times it's hard to know exactly why. Sure, that thing that we like provides some sort of value to us, but usually it's not enough value to convince someone else to switch from whatever they were liking to the thing that we like. For instance, my favorite programming language is Scala and I have been using it for over 7 years. I could write an entire book or record an entire video about why I love Scala, but I would never be able to convince anyone else to use it. Nor should I. And by the way, it's not because I'm such a bad salesman. Do I think it's the best language? For me? For the things that I'm working on right now? Yes. For you? I don't know. Am I happy with every little feature of it? No. Have I seen its flexibility being abused? Amen. So why do I love it then? The answer comes from one of the greatest philosophers of our time. Bruce Lee. In one of his famous interviews, which you can find over here, he says that it's very easy to put up a show and become someone else, but it's very hard to honestly express yourself. I interpret it in such a way that even though it's hard to honestly express yourself, 
when you do, you feel natural and thus good about yourself. And this is why Scala is my favorite programming language. It allows me to express my intent without fighting it. Writing Scala code feels natural to me. Now, even if this was always the case, how could I possibly convince you to use it? No one is like you, and no one is like me. This kind of attitude has been working out quite nicely for me lately, so I can highly recommend having such a perspective on the things that you like, instead of shoving them into other people's throats. So as I said in my very first video, make your own decisions, draw your own conclusions, and don't contribute to opinion wars. One other thing before I go. As I already mentioned in this series, the market is currently in developers' favor, so some companies cannot afford to fire developers so easily, or at least they think that they cannot afford to do so. If you have a stubborn or impulsive personality, or if you have a tendency to be ignorant, my advice for you is not to bat on the current market situation. If you don't listen to your team, I guarantee, sooner or later, they will find a way to replace you. I don't want to leave you on a sad note like this, so I'm going to end this video with this instead. The Silicon Valley Show popularized the tabs versus spaces argument, and of course somebody uploaded it to YouTube. The scene is less than 3 minutes long, and it's going to make you smile. Alright, I hope you liked this video, my video, not that other one. Join our community by subscribing to this channel. It's Vlad, and see you next time.